Binary is a layer one blockchain designed to offer the solution of decentralized database management with the uh, dream of being able to enable a new paradigm for data. And with me is founder and CEO, Dr. Naveen Singh of Binary to explain exactly how the company will work and just give me an overview of what is your mission? What is Binary's mission? Thank you, Jane. I'm glad to be here. Um, uh, through the technology now we are talking here in New York, I'm in Switzerland. So our mission is actually the whole data, whichever, whoever it belongs to, if it's a data from a business house, a corporation or a private individual, that individual or that business house should be the sole owner of the data. And they can actually decide what to do with the data. So they must be in power. That's where the decentralization of data is coming in. That's where uh, the decentralized database is coming in. And in a nutshell, that's really what we are trying to do. And that's what Web 3.0 actually means. Mm -hmm. So it's basically giving data back to the people. Um, is exactly. that a big giving the, yeah, giving right? the control of the data back to the people and the data back to the people. And they can, they can share it whoever they want with them. I mean, it's no restrictions of sh sharing the data. I see. Because it makes sense only if you can share the data with whoever you're comfortable with. But we're just taking the, the difference between Web 2.0, where the big tech giants or the companies you use the softwares use your data with or without your consent and however terms they want to use, and bringing it to the real owner of the data, even if it's a company or individual, and they have a full right to use it or share it as per their leisure. Yeah. So just so people understand, the current situation is these big companies own all of our data, the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, Amazons, and they use it to market and sell and kind of grow their businesses into trillion dollar businesses. Um, and they're more, they're centralized. So they're more vulnerable to hacks as well, correct? That's correct. So anything which is centralized have a single point of failure. Mm -hmm. Even if they do, even if they do backups or redundancy, um, they can always retrieve it, but you know the, everything goes down. And this is where decentralization comes in. Decentralization has a huge plus is that it cannot be, I mean, it's not centralized, so there is not a single point of failure. Nobody actually controls the public blockchain. Even if somebody would hack an individual node of the blockchain, that still wouldn't disrupt the whole chain. So uh, that's a, a positive as well. Exactly. So let's say if a node is compromised, Anyways, the data is cryptographed. It's it's uh, completely encrypted. But still, let's say a node is compromised or, or its hard disk is crashed or something happens, that will not affect anything because you have hundreds of multiple nodes where the data is replicated, and that's how the blockchain works. So it's in blocks, mm -hmm. and the whole data is then scattered through all the nodes, which nobody knows where they are, where they are from. So it's a completely, uh, it's amazing. You know, it's just the power of everything goes in the hands of a lot of individuals which come and contribute in a public blockchain. Yeah. So that's why the idea of public blockchain is much more powerful than having a private blockchain. Yeah, no, it's an amazing technology. I would, um, can't wait till it becomes fully implemented, I think, in the world. So um, is this scalable? Is Inari's technology scalable? Yes, so scalability is a very important part in the data. Of course, it's uh, scalability is which, which we are talking now Ethereum has started now from proof of, proof of work to proof of stake to uh, to actually do the scalability speed and the, the gas fees issues. We are, we are very scalable. We have worked in the background on different technologies which can um, take huge amounts of data onto the blockchain and not only the storing of data, which is a very small part, actually the management of data. That means you can run queries on the data, you can do data mining, analytics of the data, data visualization, you can use artificial intelligence uh, through that data. So it's a full paradigm of data management is what we are focusing on. And since you brought up the merge, um, is Inaria also energy efficient? Yes, it's a complete proof of stake. So the, it's, it's a green blockchain. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about cost effectiveness and speed? I know these are questions that people will ask a lot. How are those addressed? So we, uh, the last test which we did is we are, uh, we started with a test, last test was 5,000 transactions per second, then we went up to 7,000 and the last we did was 10,000 transactions per second, which is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's very fast and it's as fast as centralized uh, servers, 
for the centralized databases um, with a full uh, cloud security, uh, which is the most important part. Mm -hmm. So scalability and speed, as you have mentioned rightly, are the two very important pillars uh, to address in the data part. Now, what would be some use cases uh, where people could actually see this improve their lives? So, um, Henry Blockchain is, is uh, basically targeting business houses. So it's a B2B blockchain. It's not for an individual customer to just use it and store the data because the whole data management actually belongs or, or, or is used by big corporations or, for example, websites um, where the consumer data is stored. And um, back to your question. So uh, I would start with medical. So pharma has a lot of uh, data about uh, independent individuals or the tests they do with the different pharmacological things. It's a very sensitive data. Um, I think they do a lot of, uh, they spend a lot of money from firewalls and internet security and anti-hacking things. Uh, coming to the decentralized part, coming to the public blockchain, the cost reduces significantly. And only somebody who has a, has a private key has access to data. No one else has access to data. Even with the data which is stored in different nodes, they have no access to the data. It just stored cryptographed hash in the blockchain, which could be uh, decrypted only by your private key. So FinTech, for example, all financial institutions, um, health, big hospitals, apart from pharma, is very important. Um, actually, the use case is so vast. So, I mean, from Nasdaq to everywhere, where it's a sensitive data, I think it should be decentralized. It should be uh, on the blockchain side to act, to to address those all hacks. I mean, we read it every second day that something has been hacked. We will be going public uh, very soon. So I would say in coming weeks. And after being in public, then the, the DB part, the first decentralized database that will be launched. And that will be a, a killer uh, perspective from the decentralized data management. There isn't any decentralized database uh, based on a public blockchain, based on its own protocol. There isn't any in web 2.0 or 3.0 space. And our motto is to, to actually um, increase the use of decentralized database from the technical community, the developers, the programmers, as well as from the CTOs of different big companies. Okay. So they would shift from using centralized DBs to going to decentralized databases um, for the sake of cost, for the sake of uh, security, for a hundred of, of uh, positive sides which they have. It will be uh, a little bit challenging in, in, the, in the beginning because we are the first one. It will have been easier if we had like three, four, five competitors. Um, but I think the use case is so um, um, important that I think sooner or later, the, the usability of decentralized DB is gonna take over the centralized DB. Thank you so much, Dr. Singh, uh, for joining me, explaining iNary and talking about it, what seems to be an important technology for humanity, actually.